Good morning, good morning. <laughs> Hope you're having a wonderful Wednesday morning. Uh, my name is Alex Cooper, and welcome, welcome to class. If you haven't been in one of my classes before, let me introduce myself. Uh, like I said, my name is Alex Cooper. I teach the for the Columbia County Library in Evans, Georgia, the Harlan Library, and also the Uchi Creek, now Grovetown Library with the new building in Grovetown. Yay. <laughs> And this is all, we've taken all our classes online, of course, to stay home and stay safe. So there's lots of classes here on our YouTube channel. I'm very glad that you're here with me today. Uh, one little sl um, slight note is do realize if you come to the classes when they're live, of course, you can ask all kinds of questions and stuff on the right side. So that's a really big reason to come when our classes are, um, you know, being recorded live, I guess you could say. But please share them with friends or family members and uh, you know encourage them to learn something new uh, so today we have a really really fun halloween themed class we've got a bunch of halloween themed classes today i mean this month excuse me for halloween and i hope you're making fun halloween plans and staying safe and stuff so today we have scratch basics let's make a halloween card okay so we're kind of taking our our scratch basics class and kind of put a little bit of a Halloween theme on it. So instead of doing like a birthday card and getting our cat to kick the soccer ball, we're going to make a, a bat fly in and scare Frankenstein or Frankenstein's monster is the, the proper way of doing it. But, you know, maybe they're always referring to his Frankenstein being his last name. So who knows? All right. So definitely feel free to post any kind of questions you have into the chat. And, you know, and maybe even introduce yourself and say hello into the chat as well. And the big question I always ask is, how can I help? Okay, so are you working a project? Do you have any questions about a project that you're working on? Uh, it's been, today we're covering Scratch, so any questions there? And, uh, you know, feel free to post those in the chat. Our, it may take me a minute or two to, re, um, to reply to them in the chat, but I will, okay? Now, as everybody kind of comes into the classroom and stuff, I'm supposed to welcome in there. Hold on. I'm gonna talk about some of the other classes we have coming up for the rest of the month. And I'll disappear for a moment. So of course, today's morning class on the 14th, Happy Wednesday, is our Halloween Scratch Basics. Let's make a fun Halloween card which is new for our Halloween, October. And also this afternoon, we're at 2.30, we're gonna be doing Let's Talk About Libby, our new digital library. Now, this is also, you may or may not know, but we're switching over, we've switched over, it's not switching, because it happened on the 1st, October 1st. So we have switched over to using Libby instead of RB Digital for audiobooks and uh, ebooks as well. So come join me for that class. We'll be talking about that and also we'll be talking about other free resources from the library like even using RB Digital, Acorn TV, and other things that you can get free for the library as well. Okay. Tomorrow on the 15th we're going to be talking about a neat new neat class, App Swap. So come join me. I'll be sharing all kinds of different apps that I use and on a, basically on a daily basis. And you can come and talk about the apps that you use and we can kind of share apps back and forth. And especially someone that has a new phone, maybe is new to using lots of phone apps or iPad apps or, or so forth or Android apps. We'll talk about all kinds of stuff. And tomorrow afternoon we'll be doing the introduction to Google um, Cardboard and we'll do talking about VR stuff and maybe even good ideas about a present to somebody to get somebody kind of a cheap present. So doing VR with our cell phones, okay? And then all throughout the rest of the month, we're gonna be doing all kinds of different Halloween uh, theme projects. Of course, we're gonna be doing some internet shopping, digital couponing, and also calling to the, the Harlem Library and the Grovetown Library uh, to sign up a scheduled time for our Zoom with Alex, that's me, one-on-one uh, -on -one gadget help, call in there and they'll give you further instructions on um, how to sign up and everything. And that's on the 21st for Harlem and on the 29th 
for uh, Grove Town. Here's a little bit of information about Libby. Of course, like I said this afternoon, I'll go more into detail about that. The biggest thing about Libby is after you've installed the Libby app, okay, uh, two, you need to search for a library and you're not searching for Columbia County Library, Harlem Library, or even the Grovetown Library, or even Uchi Creek. You're searching for Greater Clarks Hill Regional Library System. And then it'll say choose, and then you choose Georgia, download destination, and then enter your library card, and then you should be signed in, okay? Our libraries are open with limited services and hours. Curbside Holds Pickup is available. You can go to gchrl.org for details, or you can call, the, in, call into the library Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m., don't forget to like us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Right now we're having a subscribe-a-thon. If we can, can get 100 subscribers to our YouTube channel, we'll get our own uh, unique YouTube address. Okay, Or you can search YouTube for GCHRL videos and our YouTube channel will pop right up. So let's go ahead and let's get started with our class. So let's talk about what we're going to cover. So like I said, this is kind of a special Halloween version of our Scratch class. So we're going to change a few things here, okay? But I am going to have a handout for you with just kind of an introduction to Scratch. So let me go ahead and load that up into our chat. <laughs> So what's your experience with with uh, Scratch? Make sure that's the right one before I post it on there. All right, so. Okay, so I'm gonna post the link into the chat and you can click and download our handout. And let me open it up. <laughs> All right, it's loading. Or at least it's thinking about it. <laughs> there we go. Sometimes it's, you know, I'll click load and it takes it a little while and I go, well, I guess it's thinking about it. Okay. So, like I said, we're doing our as Halloween theme. So we're going to be choosing little characters like bats and uh, Frankenstein, which are already listed into the, um, the scratch. And we'll do some sounds like screams ah, and different things like that. Okay. We'll make it kind of spooky in the woods at some point. Okay. So our big thing is we're going to do about two projects. So let's go ahead and let's get started here. And then we'll kind of play it by ear. See if y'all have any suggestions on the main things y'all want to talk about. So the handout actually kind of focuses on just the basics of Scratch. Trying to make it really big so if you're on a, using it on a smaller device you should be able to read it okay so we'll talk about what is scratch how to sign up how to log in okay how to start scratch how to save our projects we'll do a quick program overview and then we'll kind of cover the basic tutorials first we'll kind of i think we're going to change it up from the cat uh, kicking the ball we'll kind of make it so maybe it's a bat kicking a ball how about that <laughs> And then we'll actually do a little bit of a dance party, have our different characters and stuff. And, well, let's see. I think one of the th oh, I know what we can do. I'll have a bat scare Frankenstein. I think that would be neat. And then Frankenstein runs away. Ah! I think that would be a lot of fun. And then we'll basically still cover um, our basics here. And then kind of do a monster dance party with the ghost and everything. And then we'll kind of finish up by doing kind of a fun... Halloween birthday surprise, okay? It may not be birthday. Uh, we'll, we'll figure out exactly how we're gonna do that, okay? 
and then we'll talk about exploring um, other projects that folks are doing and other resources too uh, so any questions before we get started anybody have any questions okay I'm gonna disappear so I'm not blocking the screen All right, so let's talk about what Scratch is a little bit. They kind of give an introduction. Um, if you've used Scratch before, this may sound a little bit of a repeat, but maybe we'll give some extra details and then you know a little bit more than you did before, okay? So we're gonna talk about what is Scratch and what can I do with it, okay? Scratch is a programming language and online community where you can create your own interactive stories, games, and animations, and share your creations with others around the world, you know, friends, family. In the process of designing and programming Scratch projects, you learn to think creatively, reason systematically, and work collaboratively. So how much does Scratch cost? Do I need a license? Scratch is completely free. It's by MIT. Uh, and the big thing is uh, I'll get people to say, well, if I spend a lot of time programming something in Scratch, could I sell the project? Actually, yes, you can. It's an open source language. So it, it, technically, if you did work hard on a project and you wanted to be able to sell your project, actually, you could. Okay. So can I sell my project with Scratch? Certainly, your project is your creation. Um, basically, we're going to get started here. If you want to learn more information, you can go to the about. I have a quick little video I'll play real quick. Okay, copy, paste, stop, thank you. <laughs> it's kind of a quick overview because it, it's kind of, you kind of grasp it pretty fast. So it kind of shows that there's different games. There's all kinds of different projects you can do. Okay. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Let's go to scratch.mit.edu. And I will tell you, it's like a ton of games on here too, of course. Now I'm gonna go ahead and log in where it says sign in or join Scratch. The good thing about joining, you don't have to do it for any of the projects that we're doing today, okay? But I do recommend uh, setting up an account because you can then save your projects, okay? And you can also post your projects to share with other people too. All right, so here's our main area. Later on, we'll talk about exploring, okay? We might even see if there's some Halloween projects out there that look pretty fun. But let's go up here to where it says create. But again, you don't have to be signed in. All they really want is an email address if you do try to sign up, okay? So this is Scratch. A lot of fun stuff. It is coding, but it's coding with visual blocks. So basically the blocks fit together. Let's talk about that briefly. Oh, a big thing is being able to save our project. Again, if you are logged in, you can save your project. And I think what we're going to do is a Halloween thing. So let's call it Bat 
How about bat ball, which would be kind of neat. So we'll have a bat uh, kick a ball. So do bat ball, I'm do file, and then I'm have save, okay? Now later to get to your old projects, you do file, and hold on, I don't do file, I'll do the world. Hang on, where do I do that? Oh, duh. you go to your user account, and when you click profile, it'll show all your other projects, okay? All right, so, save the project. Let's kind of do an overview here of our program. So number one, what's number one? Number one is our stage, okay? Shows a quick summary of your game, your you know interactive card, whatever you're going to do. All active sprites and your chosen background will appear here. You can move sprites around if you like. Give your project a name in the field above. Okay, given the name. All right, what's number two? Number two is our backdrop. Now you may say me, hear me say background, okay? Other coding, we you know, use the term background, backdrop, it's same thing. Here you can select a background for your game Choose some scratches library, paint your own, or import import a file. You can also grab an image from your PC's camera, though most people probably won't need this option. Okay. What's number three? Number three right here is where we see our sprites. Our sprites. The center for all the sprites in your project, like backdrops, you can add default ones, create your own. Or upload images click the little blue um, icon in a sprite to rename it change its angle or hide it what about the work area so this area is where we actually put our code okay where the bulk of your work in scratch takes place use the tabs above costumes sounds to change what you're working on, okay? What about what about um, our blocks here? So our blocks are here on the left side. The good part about it is they are based up, broken up into different categories and they're different colors. But you can do the scroll down and it'll go through all of them. So if you are looking for a block, you're not sure what it is, where it is, then you can just scroll up and down. You'll find it eventually. All right, what about our control buttons, okay? Our control buttons are right here. The green flag starts our code and the red stop sign stops our code, okay? I will tell you this, if you wanna start individual code, if you have it over here, you can click on it and it actually will play it because like uh, you're practicing something, you'll kind of see me do that every once in a while too. using our blocks. The good part about it is basically our blocks, if our code doesn't fit together, then our blocks don't fit together, okay? So you can't really code something wrong because our blocks won't fit together if you're, if you're coding it wrong, okay? The big thing about this is to kind of make us think about coding. And we also have another scratch where we, um, excuse me, we also have another scratch class. We also have another um, class that is a scratch to Python blocks. So there is a website that does Python and blocks that are similar to this. So it kind of gets you started in Python and that's a separate class, but kind of keep an eye out for that. Hey Jane, welcome, welcome. All right, Jane says we needed a Halloween card. The, car, the, the kids are not going out this year, but they want to send this card to their social media contacts. Okay, that's a great idea. So it's a great place to be and we can make our own little card. Spooky card. All right, so those are our blocks. They're kind of in different categories. Motion, look, sound, pin, 
okay data events control sensing and everything now like I said we actually have the basic handout but we're gonna change it a little bit make it a little bit more Halloween maybe next month we might do a, a turkey one that'd be kind of fun but let's kind of do it together we're gonna to make a little the, the bat uh, fly over and knock the ball and then we'll get our ball to move so that will kind of all get it to, to work together okay all right so and I think what we'll do one of the things we'll do with our card is I had this idea there's a um, Frankenstein's monster character and kind of make him scream with the, where the bat flies near him or let the ghost appear and then he screams like ah or when we do our interactive card we can have it so you click and then he'll scream ah so we may kind of play around with a little bit of that let our characters interact with some um, but yeah but I did want to cover the basic concept of making one thing move and then making something else move because that really will get you started um, in learning how to do this okay so instead of our normal uh, background and stuff we may choose something a little bit spookier okay but we still may make our bat uh, kick our ball and we'll work on his animations a little bit too okay so let's go ahead and let's pull up so first let's go ahead and we're gonna do and I'm gonna still try to follow our directions here even though I'm gonna make a few changes to it first thing is let's change and get a different backdrop or background okay so first choose a backdrop click in this button okay and we normally pick the soccer 2 let's pick something different okay so we're going to go here now if you hover here you have the option of uploading your own picture okay you can paint your own picture or you can even search for backdrops which is technically what we're doing usually we cho cho you choose the soccer field one so hopefully this will give you some ideas to begin with but we're doing Halloween so let's choose something kind of spooky okay that jungle looks a little spooky the outdoors field in it Let's see. space so here's kind of the the normal soccer one that we get we choose okay let's see Oh, there's our woods one that looks spooky at night. That might be the one we use for our dance party later. Okay, so I'm going to kind of choose the jungle one because I think it looks a little spurfier. And then we'll use our night one for a different one. Okay, so here we are in the jungle. We're actually going to, Mr. Cat's actually not going to be a part of this. So since we're not going to use Mr. Cat, let's click the little trash can right here and get rid of him. And let's go down here and let's add our sprite. We're actually looking for the bat. Now, some of these uh, characters do have animations. Okay, so if I hover over the bat, you can see that it has kind of a flying animation. Maybe we can get him to do like do that last one when he's kicking the ball. That would be kind of funny. So some of these don't, like there's an apple. Like a butterfly, but let's choose bat. And here's our bat. He's gonna fly around and stuff, go ah. Okay, so let's go back to our handout. So we have our background, we have our character, now let's go ahead and let's add the ball. So we'll click here. And why don't we make it, uh, let me see. What kind of ball should it be? 
I think a soccer ball would still work pretty well. All right, so go ahead and choose soccer ball. And we have our soccer ball here. Okay, we can kind of put our soccer ball in the middle. And we're going to kind of do something similar. So let's go ahead and let's follow our code here. So instead of cat, it'll be the bat code. The big one is we need to make sure that we actually have uh, chosen our characters. So do realize that anytime that we're doing code with every different characters, this area will change. So let's click on our bat. Okay. And let's go ahead and start dragging some of our code out there. Our big one here is we actually want two things to happen at the exact same time. So we need to make a when the flag is, is clicked start. So let's go ahead to where it says events. Let's drag when the green flag is clicked. Right. So when we click the flag, it'll start our code. Let's make our bat talk about something. So let's go to looks and where it said he says hello. Uh, how about him say something funny? How about him saying uh, a boo instead? Boo. Maybe this is Dracula in hiding. Maybe it's really Dracula bat. Okay, so two seconds. And now the big thing is we need him to move to make it look like he's about to kick the soccer ball. Okay, so let's think about, let's find out how many steps it's actually going to take us that he's actually close to where the ball was. Okay, now to make sure it's similar, I'm going to use the same ones down here. So about 125 is what we usually have with our soccer ball. Go to motion, move, and we just add it right there and change it to 125. So we have our ball about here. We have our bat about here and let's see how that works so we can actually click the flag so let's see boo ah there you go okay let's move our flag let's move the ball a little bit closer this way so it looks like he's near it okay now a big thing is this every time we get one of our characters to do something to make it reset to where he started, we actually need to put in a little bit of a break and then get it to basically rewind or go back to its initial starting point, okay? So let's go ahead and put in the weight. And we had him move 125 steps to the right. Now let's get him to wait 10 seconds and then move back 125 steps, okay? So he'll be back in the same place that he started. So let's drag him back over here. Let's add weight. And we'll give it 10 seconds, just like our handout. And then go back up to motion and say move. But this time we're going to have it say minus 125. And that means that every time, uh, you know, it finishes its animation and then it resets itself. Okay. All 
All right, so let's try that. Hit our flag. Boo. There you go. And then he waits 10 seconds. And it goes back to the start. Okay. So let's look at our the ball code. Okay. Now a big one is the cat says something for two seconds, so that means that the ball needs to wait for two seconds. So let's click our the soccer ball, and you'll see our it looks like our code disappeared, but now we're changing the code for the soccer ball. So we need to have when it's clicked. We need to have the weight. Where's the weight? Here it is. Control. Let's say two seconds. And let's go back to our handout. And we actually actually want it to have a sound. So let's choose the sound to play. So we go to sound. Now the bat, the soccer ball actually comes with the sound already. It does say basketball bounce, but that'll work fine. All right, let's look how that it works. Ah. All right, so now that we heard our sound, let's get our soccer ball to move to. And we've got it to move all the way off the screen to 250 steps. Let's go to our move motion, put it right there, and let's make it 250. All right. Now, again, if we, anytime we make it do something, we need to have an opposite. So let's add in our wait 10 seconds and then make it go back 250 so it'll be right where it started. And then we can play around with it. All right, so let's give it 10 seconds, just like we did the bat. And then choose motion and move minus 250 this time, okay? All right, so let's hit the green flag, and that means that this code and the code for the bat will start at the exact same time. Now, the interesting part about this is it's really, we're basically creating an illusion that makes it look like the bat kicked the ball, but maybe he really doesn't. It's just the way the, the motion is. Boo. There you go. And then we gotta wait for it to come back. There you go. All right, so I don't think it really, when you move it this way, just a little bit, I think. Okay, so now let's go ahead, and that's one project, okay? But let's go ahead and talk about our bat and make it look like the bat's flying over there. So we're gonna go ahead and add a little bit of extra. So let's talk about our costumes. Now, some folks will call this animation. Make sure you choose the bat. And you see that the bat has different animations, right? Even one where it looks like he's sleeping. Is there one that's gonna make him look awake upside down? No, that always looks like he's flying. All right, so we actually want it to not go through all of the animations. We just want it to go through the first three because that'll make him look like he's flying. 
or if I choose these two, at least these two will make him look like he's flying. That looks like a ah! Oh, okay. Let's just do the first two animations. So let's go back to code. Let's get our bat to change his animations. So if we do events, Let's drag this over there and then let's go to looks and we only want it to change the first two but we want it to continuously change the first two so let's actually make a repeat let's go to control and drag the repeat over here and then let's go to looks and it'll say switch costume to and I'm actually going to choose it's the A and the B we want to go back and forth and then we got to give it a, a second so if we actually had two switch to costume on here we need to have a wait in between okay so we're gonna make it the B and the A so let's if I click this it'll just show this code it'll just run this code See? Oh, I need to have um, a pause at the end too. So hold on. So wait another second. So if I click go, there you go. Nice and steady flying. All right. Now, let's put it all together and see how it looks. So he says, boo. There you go. And then it resets. Oh, the bat's still going around. <laughs> okay, so maybe we need to tell it to not do it as much. Why don't we tell it to do it five repeats of the flying? All right, so let's click and try again. So our flag says boo. There he goes. And he kind of flies in midair and then it resets after 10 seconds. There we go. All right, so that's kind of our animation. And it makes it like the bat looks like he's clicked Click at some and we have a sound. Boo. Okay, awesome. So I'm going to um, go up here to file and hit save. And now let's go ahead and hit file and new and let's work on our new project. We're going to do our spooky dance party, okay? So instead of our normal characters, we're going to choose some spooky ones on here. And I'm not sure, let's, I'll play around with that when we get to it, but we might be able to find some uh, spooky music, I hope. I know the ghost has like a ooh kind of sound, but... We have some screaming and stuff too. Okay, so let's go ahead and our goal is to kind of make it like a, a spooky dance party. Okay, with different ghouls this time. All right, so let's go ahead and let's change our background. So we click in the add a background. Let's click where it says spotlight. And we're not actually going to be using our cat. So let's click the X right here on the little trash can to make our cat go away. All right. 
Now let's add a sprite, but this time we're going to add Frank is what we're going to do. Well, let's add our bat. Let's go down here and click here and let's add our bat. Spooky bat. There you go. And let's click again and let's click and let's add Frank this time. Where is he? There he is. There's Frank. He's a dancing machine. I guess if his father was Dr. Frankenstein, then his last name would be Frankenstein. And then he would be Frankenstein. Anyway. All right, so let's have our bat kind of fly around up here because that's he's a flyer. And let's add another one. And we think we have one more that's a little bit spooky. Hang on, let's see. What was the third spooky one on here? Here's a goblin, and the goblin just kind of waves. Oh, we have our ghost. Yeah, go to our ghost. There he is. All right, and he's kind of floating up here. Our Frankenstein is kind of big, so right about here is good for him. Okay. All right, so let's go ahead and name our project. How about Frank Dance Party? So it's a Frank Dance Party. And then I hit File, and I'll hit Save Now. All right, so let's go ahead and let's do the bat. When the flag is clicked, we want it to repeat the dance animation, okay? This time we want the bat to, to do it a little bit faster. So instead of a second, we're gonna have it do half a second. So let's go to our bat here and then do a Then when flag is clicked, okay. Dancing, dancing, dancing. Do, 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 do. He's a Frankenstein dancing machine. All right, so we want to make it look like our bat is dancing. So let's go to our costume. So well, I think we're just mostly going to do the first and second one. Uh, let me see. Oh, I, I know we could do something really neat. This kind of looks like he's, let's see. So if I had him, hmm. I could do a little neat uh, animation here. I have, to, I have to play with it a minute. So let me play with it just a minute here. So I need to make sure it's on the Bat D costume. So I'm gonna go to looks. Let me see, switch to the Bat D costume. And I'm actually going to, let me see. Let's see, so I guess that would be, what would that be? No, I don't want him to turn. I want him to be pointed. Yeah, give me one second. Let's see. So if I do a different direction. Okay. <laughs> I have him kind of... There we go. That looks pretty good. Doesn't it? Okay. So... So I've made sure he's in that direction. Okay, so if you want a character to start in a certain area on screen, one of the easy things to do is this. So if I take this character and I move him anywhere on the screen, there's these coordinates, okay? Now it's X axes and Y axes, which so there's like a line going between the screen like this, okay? 
but mainly all you really need to know is sometimes this will be negative, sometimes this will be negative, sometimes this will be positive, and then sometimes this will be positive as well, and it just tells on the screen where to put the character, okay? So if I have the screen, I have it turned 90 degrees, and I move him up here, you'll see that this resets every time. The easiest way to make sure a character starts where they're supposed to start is move the character there, and it'll automatically change the coordinates. And then where I have the go to, I don't have to figure it up. So I want it to be these three things. Anytime I click the flag, I want it to be these three things, and we're actually going to have him start the dance party. So, if I do make our, him switch, let's see, if he's upside down, <laughs> okay, I think we can figure this one out. Instead of hello, I'm going to have him say, uh, let's dance. <laughs> let's dance. Okay, so he's going to start off with this costume. And then, yeah, I want it to switch to the other costume. Okay, I think I'm going to get it to wait a second, okay, and then, where's my, we go to looks, and then have it switch to the, the, the C costume. So this should actually make it look like He's asleep for a second. He is up here to always return him to up here when I click the flag, okay? And then he'll say, let's dance! And it's gonna switch to this other costume and make it look like he's yelling. Okay, so here we go. No, hold on. What happened? Oh, when he switched the costume. Okay, so I've gotta keep the the same direction. So hold on. Which one is the direction? One point of direction is blue. No. Let's see. Turn, 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 turn. Point of direction still needs to say, so when it switches that costume, it still needs to say 90. Okay, so if I click here, there we go. No, that didn't work either. Hold on. Hmm. Oh, did I do something? I must have done something wrong here. So if I want that, that should be negative 90. Okay, so hold on. I've got to get this here and then make sure this says negative 90 on it okay so he'll be upside down so if I hit the green flag upside down let's dance there we go and then i'm after the let's dance i'm actually going to have him let's see if i get him to turn I know I'm making the bat a little more complicated here, but I think it'll be worth it. So it'll make him give us a whole animation about him. Okay, so he's up there. We're gonna have him. Turn. And then get him to fly down to here. Okay, or glide to a certain position. Okay, and I'll give him another wait a half a second. Of 
0.5. And then let's see, how far will that get him to go? All right, so he's there. Let's dance. And then he starts turning. Easiest thing might be to put that in the one of the repeat things. So let's put him in a repeat. And then let's see how far he gets. All right, here we go. Let's dance. Oh, almost all the way. And if he gets, wait, 11? If he gets one more, let's see. So if he gets an 11, let's dance. Turn, 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 turn. I'm going to have it animate here. Huh. Needs one more. All right, so I can do a 12. Let's dance. Turn, 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 turn. There we go. Perfect. Okay. So he'll turn and then um, fly down to here is kind of our goal. Okay, so what we want him to do is we want him his motion to be down here. Okay, so again, it automatically sets the coordinates, so I don't have to figure that up. Go to where it says glide, and it's going to have that on there. Okay, and let's do glide in mm, three seconds. So he's, he's kind of doing it in a smooth way. All right, and then we want the cost to, the, him to be flying. Okay, so now we have to kind of coordinate all this with his flying. Okay, so let's do events. And then I want to do the costume change. So we need it to figure out how long we have to wait. So from here, this is about a second, two seconds. So about three seconds in until it starts looking like he's going to fly. We want to change his costume. We want to do the repeat thing. So we need the, the repeat thing out here. We want to change our costume. Let's see. All right, switch costume to A. And then, let's see, where is it? Wait a second. And then switch it to B. B, and then we got to add a wait a second. That's just so that it looks the animation looks smooth. All right, so let's try that. So this should take. This is one second, and then two seconds. Then he says, "Let's dance," and then this says he should start to turn and move in that direction. Okay, and while all that's going on, after the three seconds, he should start. Looking like he's flying, switch between the A and the B. Here we go. Let's dance. And then he starts to turn. Oh, perfect with the wings. Perfect. And then he flies down. There you go. And then we're a dance party. <laughs> I knew that seemed complicated. But I knew that that was going to look great. Okay. We might need it to do maybe um, 15. Okay. All right. Now let's get Frankenstein to dance. We know our time frame here is three seconds. All right. So let's see how, what our costumes animation looks for Frankenstein. <laughs> That's funny. 
so he's kind of like that crazy arms and monster like that's funny da, 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 da. Da, da, da. you can make a whole dance routine out of just Frankenstein doing a little dance here okay but we're gonna be very simple with him let's just get him to at least right now maybe we'll have some other ideas here in a second so when the flag is clicked he needs to wait um, three seconds so I need to make sure three seconds okay and then we need to have repeat and we want it to just we just want him to switch to the to the um, through the costumes that's all we really want it to do all right and we need it to wait in between or it's gonna look just just very silly so 0.5 will make it half a second okay so let's see what that looks like let's go ahead let's dance so we need definitely need to make him do um, more than 10 okay so why don't we do 20 here we go let's dance <laughs> 20 wasn't enough either we'll have to check our music okay now we have him with his arms out so actually if we added a look here just to make sure let's see at the very beginning he is on the first costume so he just stand looks like he's just standing there there we go. So now it looks like he's just standing there waiting. Do 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 just dance. Do 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 do. A bat turns, flies down. Perfect. But he kind of stops too early. We're gonna have to fix his music, I think. We can fix his uh, time. So he needs probably thirty. Let's try thirty on him. All right, so let's go ahead and let's do our ghost. So Frankenstein's looking pretty good. Do our ghost. All right. So this is one where we're going to play around with all of the different things that we can do. We're going to make him change color. We're going to add some blocks. Okay. I want him to kind of do a turn change color, all kinds of stuff. And then we'll actually start making the background change color as well, okay? Now let me see if there is, let me play around with it just a second here. If I do, and you can upload your own music and you can upload mp3 files so if you do upload if you look here there are it does support WAV files and it does support mp3 files as well so let's see where is
or something kind of spooky. <laughs> with mystery that's kind of spooky okay so now we have our mystery music so In the sound section, we can actually do some changes on here. We can make it faster. I kind of like that actually. Could make it slower, could make it louder, softer, fade in, fade out, or reverse it. Robot sound. Any of these, you, if you don't like it, you can even cut it shorter if you want to. Let's see. It is a monster dance party. I think speeding it up helped it a little bit. Um, so this is our, let's see. So if I did, I selected that and I did copy. And if I went to the end here, and I did paste, what would that be? All right, so let's hear the whole thing. That sounds pretty good. So I actually copied, pasted this part to be a little bit longer. So when we play it twice, it'll seem a little bit longer. All right, so let's go ahead and let's start doing some stuff here with our ghost. We won't get it to play the sound yet, so we're not hearing the sound too many times, okay? But let's go back to our, let's look at costumes for our ghost. So he's kind of a dance, he's a kind of a dance guy. Okay. The interesting part is some of these things, if you get him to do, wow, that's, that's cool. Those are all separate little, wow. I didn't realize that on Mr. Ghost here. Ah, so you can, oh, he's in different little pieces. Interesting. Okay, 
anyway, let me go back here. So, uh, that always kind of looks like a uh to me, which is kind of funny. So he now has the mystery, and he also has this weird noise, which I always think it sounds like an alien to me. But if it goes from here to here to little, 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 you know, to kind of thing. So let's see. If I did want to do add a little bit of extra here, let's see if we can add another costume. So if we do copy. Can I make a new? No, it's not what I want. Let's see. So how can I do a copy here? Oh, duplicate. Okay, if I right click here, duplicate. So I kind of want him to look in the middle, look to the left, and then look to the right. So if you go here and you say flip horizontally, boom, he's looking to the right. So straight, left, right, whirr, wah, kind of like that. Dun, 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 dun. Dun, dun. So now he's kind of got his own little dance party going on there. Okay. And if you do duplicate here and then drag it, so he'll do dun, 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 kind of like that. Okay. So you can also give him a mustache too, which I won't do that too much here but you can like draw on them as well, okay, which is pretty fun. And you can upload your own graphics as well. Okay, so let's go back to our coding and let's start an event when it's clicked. And I know we have to wait three seconds. So let's do control and say three seconds, okay. And then we basically just want him to kind of dance. So let's go ahead and put a repeat on there. And we just need him to go from one costume to a next, to the next. So let's go to looks. <laughs> Thank you, Mac. I just, you know, just kind of playing around with it. So if we get him to go next costume, next costume, next costume. And we have, uh, we need to add a pause in there. Okay. And why don't we do a quick pause so it looks like he's dancing, of course. And we need to do it a bunch. So let's do it about 30. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and let's click the flag and see if our ghost will dance now. Let's dance. See, making him look to the left and to the right. Oh, that's great. Now it looks like it's in perfect time with uh, one of the last uh, dance there, them throwing the hands in the air. <laughs> okay, so we may have to mess with our timing a little bit just to get it worked out. Now, one of the things that we can do is we can make uh, the ghost light change colors. So let's go ahead and make a new section here. So when it's clicked, and we do need to add the three seconds because remember nothing happens for the first three seconds until the bat says let's dance okay and let's see go back to our handout here what we do with gobo is that we make him uh, turn which i don't think we need to make the ghost turn but then we can make him change colors by 25 percent and also changes size as well. So we can, let's look at those options at least. So where's the color one? So looks, let's see, change size is right here. And remember if you put it on a repeat, then he'll continuously change size or change color. If you do do anything that you need to have it reset the graphic effects, then you do clear graphics, okay? When you, when you start at the top, you put it at the top and it'll say clear graphic effects. Okay. Set color effects. It also could do funny things like fisheye, 
mosaic change the brightness okay so let's get him to change color and we have other other options on there as well and oh we need to have the repeat don't we let's put the repeat on there and everybody else is getting like a 30 so let's try 30 on him and we also need it to pause in between as well so how about 0.5 and then he'll just keep changing color while he dances. All right, let's try it. Everybody resets. Let's dance. I think that's great. All right, now depending on where the music is, wherever your sound is, so I know it's on our ghost, so let's do ghost and sound. And there's mystery. So, uh, mystery, so let's go back to code, and we know it's on the ghost, so let's do the, when the flag is clicked, sounds and play and it'll show whatever is connected with the and you can record your own as well whatever is connected with this sprite like the, sp the space ripple when you drag it over here it'll show it okay so we want we need everything to wait three seconds remember we'll put it right before there say three seconds and we do need it to repeat. I don't think I would need to repeat 10 times. Okay. Big one is making sure it says until done. Okay. So let's try five. And then here we go. Let's see. Let's dance. Is flying too much so let's hit our bat here and let's see which costume Pete he did the turn oh the okay so we're gonna shorten his I don't know let's do 10 maybe all right here we go Let's dance. play one too many times I think so let's switch our music back to just four okay all right so and I don't know looking pretty good okay now let's code the background yes you can code the background the big one on this is that we actually want our background to change color so we do the flag we're gonna do the wait three seconds okay and then let's do the repeat and look for the one that set basically says to change the color effect okay and if we click it remember it waits for three seconds and then the background starts changing now that's too much so let's let's slow it down a little bit let's put a point five in there Okay, let's see what that looks like. There you go, perfect. I guess we need it to do more than 10, so let's put 30 on there.
There you go. Okay, now that might be a little too much. Let's try 25. All right, let's try everything together. And let's see it full screen. Let's dance. <laughs> Still look like our music was playing one too many. So let's shorten our music down. Let's make it do it three times and then let's try one more time. Let's dance. <laughs> get the bat to stop let's see so our bat how many times does he fly he repeats let's see ten times let's make him do okay we'll make him do nine and I think I think we're done then here we go let's dance <laughs> kind of like they they stopped a little bit didn't they right after the music okay I think that's kind of cute so that's kind of our monster dance party so let's go ahead to our next project and let's do our interactive card and the interesting thing about this is we're basically gonna be talking about um, doing some animations the clicking and I kind of had an idea of having our bat uh, fly in and then scare uh, Frankenstein Frankenstein screams okay ah! so if you click our we'll have it maybe our have our bat up here click the bat and it can fly down scare Frankenstein Frankenstein goes ah I think that would be kind of fun okay so let's go ahead and let's keep working with what we've been doing let's go ahead and do file new and let's get rid of the cat Let's go ahead and choose our background. Let's choose the spooky woods this time. Woods. It's a spooky woods. Let's go ahead and add our bat. There's our bat. And let's add Frankenstein. There he is. Is there a frog? Frogs can be spooky, can't they? <laughs> eh, I don't know if that is very spooky. I know we got our ghost. <laughs> See anything else spooky? Now remember you can draw your own characters and upload your own characters too. Let's see, there's a mouse. A referee whistle. Let's see, a shark. And I believe that's about it. There's a witch. Let's see, which kind of looks friendly. There's a wizard. I'm a wizard, and I shall not pass. Wizard girl. <laughs> wizard hat. Let's see. We 
could do something kind of neat. Let's see, a three part here. Let's go ahead and let's do our ghost right now. And let's do our wizard toad. Wizard toad. So we do something a little bit different here. So we've got our bat. We got our wizard toad. Okay. So let's have our bat. What we're going to do is our bat. It's going to, if we click our bat, he's going to fly down to Frankenstein. And then Frankenstein's going to go, ah! How about that? With a little scream. So let's click our bat. And we need to start with our when clicked. Okay. And we actually want to set it so he glides down. So we want it to be when we click the, the flag, he always starts in the same place. So let's go to, where is it on here? Uh, let's see, so right now he's, he's up here, okay? And I'm gonna have it so any place, remember any place we put the character, it'll do the, the coordinates for us. And then if we drag it over here, it set it and we don't have to figure out what the coordinates are by hand, okay? Now, I want to, let me see. When the flag is clicked, I want the, the bat to be up there, all right? And the new thing we're going to learn is controls. If, if we do click on something, all right, hold on. I'm trying to remember where the click thing is. It's on her. Let me see. Hello, switch costumes. Change volume. There you go, when Sprite is clicked, okay. Ah, interesting, so I'm trying to think about what we need to do. So, huh. All right, so we're gonna get rid of this right now. I need to have it so when we click the, when we click the bat, but I'm also gonna make sure that it goes back to where it starts at the end. So when I click the bat, I want it to, and we're going to need to, we'll need two of those. Okay, so we need two when the sprites click because I need him to start flying too. Oh, I guess he needs to be flying anyway, doesn't he? Okay, so we'll do that. And we'll do the when is clicked. Let's go ahead and get his um, flying animation taken care of. So we'll get him to kind of repeat forever because he's just going to kind of stay in one place and, and fly. So we need to have him switching costumes. We need to switch him from the A and then wait half, wait a second and then switch to the B. Oh, I gotta add the second at the end. So nice flying. There we go. Perfect. 
So he'll just kind of hang up there and keep doing that until, until I hit him to stop, okay? All right, so we, when we click him, we want him to fly down to here, okay? So he's up here, wanting to fly down to here, which will scare Frankenstein, okay? We want him to glide to where he is, and we'll give that two seconds. And then when he glides to where he is, okay, And we want our Frankenstein to yell. Okay. So let's click Frankenstein. And if we have, let's see. <laughs> Where's my if? Alright, so if we do what if we need a when flag is clicked, if the sensing, make sure you go to track chain here. Ha. All right. So when flag is clicked, if I think I have to put a repeat on that, if bat, if touching bat, then oh, I have to add a sound on Frankenstein. Okay. So let's do click sound. Right now it's a wolf. <laughs> Go figure on that one. So let's click here. And let's go to voice. We're going to make him scream. Ow! Ah! Ow! I think this one's funnier. Ow! Ah! Okay. Ow! Of course, if I make it slower. Ow! 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 Maybe robot. Ow! <laughs> Ow! Ow! All right, so we have our screen. Go back to our code. So, and I think this has to be on some kind of repeat if I remember my coding right. We're going to play it that way and we'll see. So, when the flag is clicked, if touching the bat. Okay, so he should be touching the bat right now. Then start sound scream. There you go. All right, so let's try that. Ow! Ow! <laughs> that worked. That Ow! is working. That is Ow! working. Okay, so when uh, I need to go back to the bat. So when the flag is clicked, I need to make sure the bat is at the top again. Ow! Okay. So if I hit go, then I click the bat. He should glide down, touch Frankenstein, and then he should yell. Ah, okay. So, Ow! I need to do something. You remember I told you I think I had to have it in a forever loop. So, let's get this in a forever loop. Perfect. Okay, let's try it. So, I click the bat. Uh, 
Uh, uh. Okay, so maybe we should make the bat fly back. Okay, we won't be hearing that all the time. So if I go and I, let's see. <laughs> ah! Okay, maybe I can make him. Let's see, what can I do? The sensing is in a forever loop and it wants to play the sound. Play the sound and stop. Okay. Let's try that. Okay, that did not work. That's not what we want. Let's see. Let's see, so play sound, okay, until done. All right, so let's do the scream until done. And then I want to stop all sounds. Let's see, change pitch, clear sound effect, change our volume. Let's see. Maybe we want him to change his animation. That could be fun. <laughs> and we'll get him to switch to Uh, I don't want that to do for, okay, so if bat, if the bat touches him, play a sound until done and switch. So his costumes are, ah, <laughs> well, those look mad. I was looking for something funny. Ah, yeah, maybe it is kind of funny. Okay, so that's D. So if I make it switch to D. Ow! All right. So let's try that. Okay, and then I know what we'll do. We'll tell the bat to fly back. So we have him glide there, okay? And then we'll ha make him glide back, okay? After the uh, after the, the yelling starts. So then he'll yell and run back. How about that? So then we'll give him three seconds. And then we'll tell it to, and I'll just go ahead and move him back up here. Okay. And then we'll make it glide, glide back. There we go. And then it'll, it'll, it, he, he'll, the Frankenstein will stop yelling. Okay. So Frankenstein, after he screams like that, we do need to get it to um, reset his costume. So let's do the costume switch. So if you hit the flag again, his costume will go back to A. All right, so here we go. So our bat's flying. Frankenstein's been reset. We click the bla the bat. Ow! 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 <laughs> How about that? How about that? That's cute. Okay, now my other thing was I was going to do was I was actually going to have it so that we click the wand, which I think I could do that fairly quickly, and then the frog will turn into the um, the the magician and he'll say Happy Halloween. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's add the wand. Where's the wand? There's our wand. Let's add 
the magician, the wizard, excuse me, the wizard, but we want to put the wizard here, but we actually want to uh, not show the wizard. So we want to click there so it's not show. And let's move our wand here. And I think I'm actually going to turn it. So it looks kind of like that. Okay. Okay. So we have our wand. So we have our wand. And let's see if there's a sound that comes with it. Perfect. Okay. So let's go ahead and let's drag. And how big is our how big is our wizard? Okay, let's make him a little smaller. So why don't we make him like fifty percent or something? Yeah, because he looks absolutely huge. And maybe if I mirror him. All right, we'll figure that out in a second. So he's still hidden. Okay. All right, so we're on our wand. And we want to have it so that, where's my click? So when the sprite is clicked, Okay, I want it to play the sound. Okay, and I also want it to, let's see, let's see, because I want that guy to say hello. One doesn't have different costumes. Okay, so I have Okay. So if I do, if I click it, then I can move it. Perfect. Okay. And let's do it so if the wand touches the frog, it will disappear. And if the wand touches the, the wizard, it will reappear. Okay. So let's do a forever loop with the flag is clicked, of course. And we'll do a if. What, where's my if? If. See, wand, if frog is touching wand, and I want it to hide, hide, okay, let's see if that works, click the flag, 
Now I can't move it until I click on it. Aha! Uh -huh. I have to let go of it. That's interesting. Okay. Makes it draggable. And if the wand is touching the frog, it hides. And let's basically do the same thing here. Let's copy this. Oh, I don't want it to be, okay. Control C. And if the wand touches it, then I want it to show. Let's see. All right. Okay. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, how do I make him show? Let's show. Huh, interesting. Let's see. Oh, does the wizard have different costumes? Uh, so he's mad on that one, isn't he? Let's see. Let's see. So. <laughs> so the wizard is hidden. Is there a let's see it looks clear graphic effects go inside go forward go to hide show show hmm okay Don't want to go into that. I just wanted to do the thing where one would disappear and the other one would be. No, that's not what I want. Hmm. That's funny. Okay. So, how can I get it to. I got to do sounds, got to do looks, switch costume, next costume, let's see, clear my graphic, effect, go to front layer, go to forward layer, costumes, drop, magic spell. So if touch wand, so what's the other same same thing? Touching manage bat blank wand. Hmm. 
thought that would take care of that. Let's see. So when we click, all right, let's see here. So looks, we start at the beginning. We click this, it should show the frog. We have our bat flying around. We click our bat. I love that. That's that's really cute. And then we have our magic wand. And if we drag our magic wand near the frog, the frog disappears, but I can't get the wizard to show up or to show. Okay. So touching wand then show. Okay. Well, let's see. Show. So if I hit stop, so that just being there, I guess, doesn't work that way. Let's see, forever if touch and wand. So I guess it's not being, it's not hidden there. There has to be a trick in here. So give me a second. Let's see if I can come up with the trick here. If hidden. Random. Background of stage. Okay, so I can't have it, so it's just something to think of if I click the frog. Let's see, so if I go to my section that says when click sprite, no, I don't want, hold on. When you click Sprite, show. Okay, that won't work because it's hidden. Okay. Uh, okay. But I can do it so. When I click, it'll disappear. <laughs> but then if I set it up to try to click again, it won't show, huh? Okay, but what if I say clear effect? Because he's disappeared, that won't work. Oh, sure. Let's see, costume number, size. Think, switch costume, next costume, switch backdrop, change size. Hmm. Front layer, forward layer. So this is the sensing, touching, something is touching another character. The background color is different. Touching green distance to, huh. Maybe it needs to be a variable then. I don't wanna to have to go into that. Let's see, spacing. Mouse down. Not sure. Timeline. Set 
power each thing. Hmm. So that can't be there. Let's see, is there something that I could start a timer? So if I tap the frog and then it would switch to something else. Uh, that's something different. Right direction. Say hello. Okay. Let's see, I might have an idea here. Can I take the wizard off the screen? Okay, okay, I might have an idea here. Okay, so we're gonna do that thing where we, it looks like the animation's interacting with each other, but it's really not. And I believe I can set it up so when I move the, if I move the um, wand into this section or whatever, it's gonna look like the frog disappears, which of course the frog would disappear, but when I move the wand down here, then I can actually set the wizard to show. Okay. So I'm going to try to do that. So if, let's see. So if, let's see. So if the wand, let's see. And I think I need to do a variable. Let's see. So if wand so go to it's telling it you do sensing. Okay, so if the wand mm,
event spot score. Okay, let's see. <laughs> Gliding. Wizard, but if we want the let's see, and I can hide those as well if I go down to the let's see, so. my wand okay we've run out of time for our little handout here so I'm trying to make something <laughs> more complicated than I should it looks like but I thought it would be pretty neat to drag the little magic wand over here but I think what we may do is we may just let that be a thing we can carry that around and we'll go ahead and get rid of our frog for now because the interactions gotten a little complicated with that so I think what we're gonna do is this something very simple We'll have our wizard. There's our wizard. And then our wizard will say if you click on him, he's just going to say Happy Halloween. Okay. <laughs> Trying to make something that seems simple, but got very complicated. Okay, and that would just be like a little fun party thing. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at our card big screen here. I guess we won't be turning the wizard into a frog today, but we have our fun stuff going on. So let's go ahead and click our flag. We can click our bat. Ow! 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 <laughs> Ow! 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 I still think that's great. We have our magic wand that we can move around and then we click our Mr. Wizard and he says happy Halloween <laughs> it's a fun project sorry I got stuck there at the end of our um, let's see about switching you know because it can be hard to turn a frog into a prince and I guess it can be hard to turn a frog into a wizard as well. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about some of the other classes and stuff that we have coming up. We also have other resources here, um, as well as the handout, how to make your own game and stuff, which we're going to have a Halloween game, is that's what's going to come up. We'll actually be clicking kind of a Ghostbusters kind of thing where our ghosts appear in the woods and we click it and it actually makes a score uh, for it, which is a lot of fun. And some other things we'll be doing um, the rest of the month as well. So definitely come join me this afternoon for Let's Talk About Libby. Okay, um, our digital card, excuse me, our new um, ebook and audio um, electronic audio book <laughs> delivery service, and we'll also be talking about other things that are free from the library through the library as well. And tomorrow we'll be doing a really neat class, an app swap class. In the afternoon we'll be talking about Google Cardboard. So come join me for that. And some other really fun Halloween stuff that we have coming up uh, near the end of the month too. Definitely remember that our libraries are open with limited services and hours. You can go to gchrl.org for details or call in the library with questions. 
Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Don't forget to like us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Remember, we're trying to get 100 subscribers to our YouTube channel so that we can get our own uh, specialty YouTube address. Or you can search YouTube for GCHRL videos and you'll find us there as well. So thank you so much for joining me for class today. Whoop. Thank you for so much for joining me for class today. Have a great day and I'll see you next time. So have a great day. <laughs> Stay safe. Bye-bye. Uh,